Welcome back to another episode of 64 Bourbons Under $100. This is the final category, it's $75 to $100, also known as wild cards, because wild cards are mixed in here. That's right, it originally started out as $75 to $100, but it turns out that there aren't that many readily available, always on the shelf, yeah. bourbons in, in that, that category. category. Right, yeah. So we ended up just throwing in wild cards that you guys wanted to see. So if you're ever like, oh, this matchup doesn't seem quite fair, <laughs> that would be why. It's wild. It's wild. It's the wild and wild cards. All right, we just know this as bourbon A. We're gonna get into it. Mmm. Classic, isn't it? Very classic. Wow. Caramely, hint of fruit. Oak. Little bit of, yeah. Vanilla. Sprink sprinkling of oak. Very classic. Definitely had this a bunch of times. Super familiar. Yes. <laughs> what could it be? I don't know. Let's find out. Well, I still don't know what it is, but. Still don't know. It's really good. Light, sweet, easy, approachable. Yeah. Proof-wise, hard to say. I mean, I wouldn't put it over 100 proof. I like the deeper, darker notes. It's got some stone fruit in there. Oh, it's working pretty well, I like it. Yeah, I think it starts out light and sweet, and then as, you know, the experience continues, it goes into those darker, mm -hmm. oaky, a little bit tannic. Now let's see about bourbon B. Somehow, I think that these are actually gonna be a good matchup. Yeah, this nose isn't as... Fragrant? Yeah. I'm definitely getting more of those darker notes on this one versus that like light, airy, sweet, classic thing that was going on with A. I'm just not pulling as much out of this one. I get some dark chocolate and maybe some richer berries. Perhaps. A little bit of blackberry. It's going for the kill. Do some mouthfeel. Oh, it is darker. Darker. Yeah. A little bit more baking spice. Heavier. Whereas A was more of like light and easy and approachable, this is a little bit deeper, richer, darker. Mm -hmm. Mouthfeel wise, they're pretty evenly matched. This one, yeah. B might have a little bit more oiliness to it. All right, yeah. well, I'm gonna go back to A. Definitely have to be some A, B testing here to see what's what. Oh. Uh, going back to A, mm. it has more of a nutty quality on the nose, which I know Chad likes. Uh, well, I guess I could see that nuttiness. Um, it's not peanuts, it's more of like almonds, pistachios, almond, that kind of like, Honey. Fainter. Yeah, type of combo. I do think I like the nose better on A. Oh, this is a good one. I don't know what to think. <laughs> a seems a little bit more like it's something that you would encounter on the shelf every day, but that it's a really good value for whatever you're getting. I think B feels a little bit more like, I don't know if I would, if I would call it specialty, but it doesn't feel so much like for the masses. I'll tell you, A is hotter. It is. Um, higher proof. Uh, perception, anyway. I said a hundred. I said a hundred. Uh, the <laughs> the first time around, ninety to a hundred, but the finish is hanging out for a little bit longer it on the is. second taste through. It is in the chest feels. Going back to B, I just cannot deny that mouthfeel and those like rich, deep, dark, grapey, syrupy notes. It might have the mouthfeel for me. A's got the nose, and then it's coming down to just you know, the palette and the finish, which I'm, well, I'm liking more. I don't feel like this one is actually sticking around as a finish as long as A. And I am sort of liking the brightness that's on A. I do enjoy these deeper, darker notes as I tend to do. Something about the brightness in A um, is at least giving the impression of it being more complex. Mm. You know, whether it is or not, I don't know, but that's the impression I'm getting. This is a tough one. I like both of these. I'm like you, I'm a little split, but I'm, I'm leaning more A, so I think I gotta go A. I'm leaning more B, although I think that they are both excellent. Both oh, yeah. very both good. Both very good. Split again right off the bat in, in the wild cards category. Um, Guess we'll have to have a tiebreaker. So I am advancing Russell's Reserve Single Barrel, 110 proof. Yep, I was yep. off on that proof. The second time around, I was like, ooh, that's higher than 100. Oh, and you are advancing Four Roses Small Batch Select, which is 105. Four? I think this was a really good matchup. This is not two things that I would have normally put together, but I actually think that they did a really good face off with each other. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, Chad, uh, I did not know that that was Four Roses. No. Nope. Usually Four Roses is like, hey, it's me. Yeah, Here yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I've got six of those 10 recipes. Uh, Russell's, yeah, single barrel. Not a surprise. Tastes Love the turkey profile. Very classic familiar. Yes. I feel like what I said still rings true. Like this is a very good value. Yes. But something that's on the shelf, like it just tastes like something you're not gonna be disappointed in when you pick it up. And I do feel that way about Russell's Reserve Single Barrel. So there you go. I also feel that same way about our home on the internet. It's whiskeyambitions.com. It's where you can get 
the bourbon bunker shirt that I'm wearing, the Glen Cairns that we are drinking from. We also have our new Wee Cairns in stock, uh, the water glasses we're enjoying from as well, copitas, rocks glasses, hats, hoodies, uh, bottle cut candles, and more. That's always coming to you at whiskeyambitions.com. And you can become a patron at patreon.com slash bourbonite. I almost forgot what it was. I've been saying this for a long time. For as little as one buck a month, that is where we release our exclusive barrel picks, mm -hmm. the opportunities for events, meetups, after the episode, exclusive content, and more. All right, we're going to get reset in the next round. We'll see you then. And we're back. Thanks for sticking around. We got uh, another round here. Another matchup for you. And this is A. That smells pretty rich. If I had to guess, I would say maybe finished. Just off the nose alone. Well, we don't have anything in here that's finished. We have double barrel. That's what I mean. Bar like okay. finished in a secondary Second barrel. Secondary barrel, but not like a wine, rum, any type of flavor imparting. It's correct. still a bourbon, not an American whiskey. That's correct. There's but a lot of berries on it. There's a lot of berry and I get more oak, but like in a toasted oak almost. Again, that double oak type of way. Cinnamon toast crunch is what it says to me. Oh, I, I see cinnamon toast crunch. Yummy, I want to taste it. Let's get some milk. That's disgusting. <laughs> milk was a bad choice. I stand by my previous statement. Oh, I I think I that this is a double oak product. Absolutely. The finish, it, you definitely yeah. get that wood notes and a little bit Almost of drying. Toasted. I think it might be a toasted oak because it's got that, it's more of like lighter wood char, not so much that heavy wood char of like a secondary barrel. I have a guess, but I'm gonna keep it to myself. Yeah, berries rich, a little, you know, fruity a little bit as well. With that. Definitely the toasted element in there. Mm -hmm. um, maybe a little bit of lighter honey or tea, sort of more of a oh, tea Oh, I do probably. like a tea, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not as cinnamon Surfy. toast crunch as the nose was giving me, which no, I think that's little... the toasted. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little disappointed because I really wanted that. toast crunch. Mm -hmm. What about you, B? Let's get some water first, B? though. Floral, I was gonna say like summery on the beach. Very, I'm thinking like out outdoor picnic, there's flowers, we're in a garden. More meadow talk. Meadow garden. There's a there's a, a rabbit. Somebody take that... me on a picnic, okay? <laughs> if I don't get someone, a picnic basket, Someone give this stab. girl a, p a, p a, p a, a picnic, <laughs> a picnic basket. Mm. Like citrus zest, lemon zest, orange, lime, floral. Very summertime. Su yeah, summertime, the bees are buzzing. Mm. It's, it's just nice. Beach blanket bunnies light mm -hmm. a little more like blueberry raspberry, raspberry and herbal almost in a medicinal way like you know <laughs> not uh, not like cough syrup or anything but like flavoring, flavoring versus flavoring versus like eating organic. real fruit i can see that that wasn't really coming to note but you said it and i get it that can sometimes be a turnoff because anytime you get more artificial tasting than something from nature it can kind of you know sway you to like Oh, it's good, but ah, oh, that little yeah. twang or whatever. This is also giving me tea, but again, this is like floral, fruity tea, like steeped for a long time. Like I drink a lot of Earl Grey and this is giving me a little bit of bergamot. I don't know, I'm not trying to sound too snooty, but it's what I know but that here I- we, here we are. This is the best way people always ask us, like how do you pick out flavor notes and things? I'm like, be present when you're eating and drinking and sure. smelling things every sure. day. Even if you have to memorize what bergamot I don't have to memorize it. I drink it every day. <laughs> there is a bit bordering eucalyptus, but it's more like uh, botanical, like we said the other day. Herbal. Yeah. Botanical. Almost a cilantro <clears throat> note. Soapy for some people. <laughs> well, now I want to go back to A and see what B has done to A. Oh, oh nose. wow. Nose. Give it to A all day long. All day Now long. I'm like going back. I'm like, wait, is this double oaked? Did oh. I just like. Well, I don't know, but I'm definitely getting a savory, almost barbecue. Uh, note on the nose now. Mm -hmm. Gone are the cinnamon toast crunch and barbecue. It's now lunchtime. Oh, if I come back later, is it gonna be dinner? Barbecue again, like smoked wood. Yeah, so it's still going along with that uh, smoked or, or or at least toasted or or second barreled, uh, double barreled. I still oak. think it's double oaked. I've I've got an answer. Already gone A to B again, and I have my decision. Unless I was at a garden party, I think I would rather drink A. Same. Okay. All right. We would rather drink. Peerless double oak. I, that was my prediction. Oh, well, you yep. didn't say it out loud, well, so who know. will know if you're lying or I not? Know. Ah, against E.H. Taylor's small batch, and I we said berry. We said a lot of berry notes. Oh, 
blueberry, wow. blackberry. That should have been our key. Very, okay. very interesting. It's Little good. Little proof advantage on the uh, Peerless. It's like 107, 108, around that area than the, the 100. But minimal. 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 It also minimal. has the double oak advantage. It's got it more does have wood a influence. double oak advantage, yes. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, Shooter, Shooter McGavin. What's that I see? Oh, look, it's me being right. Hey, I guess the bottle. You you didn't say it out loud, so no one will ever I didn't know. want to influence, but just trust me. Uh -huh. I always own up when I'm right and wrong. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, hey, folks, that's where we better leave it. <laughs> if you haven't subscribed to us already, you can do so by clicking right up here. There's suggestions of other videos down here. We can see over there in one of those. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Okay, until next time, drink more bourbon.